We learn so many things in school about English. Present continuous, phrasal verbs, we get a list of words, do listening tests, and no one teaches us how to make the best use of the most important organ, something that's responsible for everything in our life, including how to learn to speak English more fluently, our brain. No wonder you feel overwhelmed to learn to speak English fluently. Schools were established so that rich people can train workers for their factories. We learn about historical events, chemical elements, verb tenses, but where is all that knowledge now? But do you still remember everything? And are you able to apply all of that in your life? The truth is, we just think we learn English in school. But what most of us actually do is study it as a subject. Because learning happens through experiencing, through doing things. In today's video, I'll be helping you understand why you feel overwhelmed to learn to speak English fluently and give you three massively powerful ways your brain and you can learn English to make more progress. Hey English learner, my name is Chubby, I'm an English fluency learning and language anxiety coach and this is a channel for English learners who want to learn how to make more vocabulary more memorable and speak English more comfortably confidently and freely in any situation with the help of listening and spoken communication. So if these are topics that you're interested in and you haven't subscribed yet, make sure you hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get weekly updates on videos all around learning to become a fluent, confident English speaker. Now, one of the reasons so many people feel overwhelmed to learn to speak English fluently is because they're English consumers and all they do is collect information. They spend about 80 to 90% of their time learning English, watching vocabulary and grammar videos, filling out quizzes just to get some results on how they perform, and spend a lot of time studying words from their textbooks. There's only one big problem with this. More information, no matter how much more information you collect, isn't going to help you know how to do things better. And I talk more about this in this video to help you understand. The reason you might feel overwhelmed to learn to speak English is because you focus too much on the end goal, too much on that fluency, and you're always looking for new vocabulary, new grammar structures that you need to get to that point because you believe that this will give you a sense of security and will help you speak more fluently and confidently. And yes, we need information and we need to keep educating ourselves. But wouldn't you think everyone in the world would be walking around fluently and confidently if information was enough? We have access to Wikipedia, free trainings, courses from the best universities. The reason why you think doing something is hard for you right now learning vocabulary more effectively or speaking in front of others is not because you're bad at it or you can't do it or because you're stupid. It's simply because you don't have the habit of doing that that would give you that confidence you need so that you could keep going. You simply don't have what we call a neural pathway existing in your brain for those skills. Your brain learns through action, and that's how you create new pathways in your brain. And the more you do an activity, the easier it will become to repeat that. Rule number one to help you feel less overwhelmed to learn to speak English, slow down on reading and watching new content, new vocabulary, new grammar, and look for ways you could review the things you already know, but maybe you're not 100% sure about. Now you might say, but it's not so easy to speak English fluently. I don't have enough vocabulary and it takes me so much time to put sentences together. How can I do this in front of other people? And how do you expect me to have a conversation this way? Which leads me to the second reason you might feel overwhelmed to learn to speak English, your fear. I used to be terrified of speaking English in front of others. And if you want to learn more about my experience so you can get inspired, you can check out the video here. Even though I studied so much vocabulary and I was really good at grammar, until I learned this one thing about our brain, your brain is not there to help you learn a second language. Your brain's function is to keep you alive. So when you're doing something new, like 
learning a second language. There are so many new things we need to do when we learn a second language. Communicating in it, listening to something in the foreign language. Your brain is sending you signals to say, stop doing this. You're doing something unusual. You're doing something I don't know how to do. And it wants you to get back to comfort and safety. And what most passive English students do is this. They avoid what they are scared of and they think collecting more information, more grammar, more vocabulary, more pronunciation practice will help them overcome that fear. But the truth is, the longer they wait, the bigger that fear grows and the harder it's going to be to learn to overcome it. The way to go about learning to overcome your fear of speaking is simple. And this is something I recommend to all my students. Notice that you have fearful thoughts and tell yourself, thank you, mind, for protecting me. Everything is going to be fine. Ask yourself, what's the real danger here? And then ask, what benefit am I getting from doing this even if I'm scared? I'm going to basically take another step to get closer to my fluency as a way to practice my communication skills. And step three is do what you need to do, even if you're scared. That emotion will go away in just a few minutes, as long as you stay in that emotion. Instead of avoiding speaking because you're scared of it, thinking that staying comfortable will eventually help you overcome that in the long term, and then realizing that that fear has just grown bigger, stay in that emotion and understand that there is nothing dangerous in there. You will see once you've done it, how you will feel so much more motivated and relieved because you've done something for your English, you've shown up for your fluency skills, and most importantly, you've taken another small baby step to overcome your fear of speaking. And if you're scared of what other people will think of you, maybe they will make fun of you or they will be unsupportive, then join our free Facebook group called Build Your Fluency, which is a free Facebook group for English learners from pre-intermediate or intermediate level upwards that will give you opportunities every week to practice your conversation skills and give you weekly fluency trainings to help you understand what to do to make progress with your English fluency. Joining Build Your Fluency is another way you can help yourself feel less overwhelmed to learn to speak English. And if you're interested in learning more about effective ways to learn vocabulary, how to use listening to actually speak faster, how to get that confidence you need in speaking English and having conversations, then make sure you subscribe if you haven't yet and hit the notification bell to get weekly updates a full video on something around your speaking, listening, or vocabulary skills. The third reason you might feel overwhelmed to learn to speak English is because you want immediate results right now. You want to be able to use grammar and vocabulary immediately, and you feel disappointed when you make a mistake about something that you think you should know by now because you have studied it. This is a common block among English students because they look at knowledge as blocks of information. Because in school, what we do is we learn, let's say, present continuous for a week. We take a test, we get a score on it, and then we move on to learning about articles. And then we practice a few days, take a test, we move on to learning about the first conditional and then practice and get a score. But does it guarantee that by that time, I will still remember how to use present continuous confidently? Knowing how to do something is always a process. And learning to speak English fluently is like walking out of a foggy forest. And the more steps you take, even if you're not entirely sure where to take that step, or you don't understand everything that you're reading or listening to, the clearer that fog will get. The more you see, listen to, and read something in English, the better you will know the vocabulary. You just need to learn to be okay, not to understand everything immediately, and trust the process of walking in that foggy forest and learning that the more you get exposed to English through reading and listening to something that's a bit above your level, 
the more you do your own research about vocabulary to know more about it, and the more you practice what you've learned in conversations, the clearer everything will be. Your brain learns better what it gets repeated, not what it sees in blocks. Interleaving, the strategy that I'm about to explain to you in just a minute, is what helped all my students inside my fluency program, the Proficiency for Address, build a strong foundation of grammar and vocabulary so that they can walk into any conversation with confidence, feeling comfortable and free to speak because they know what to say and they know how to say that. Pick a video or a topic and then write down some related vocabulary. Practice a little bit and then move on to something else. Maybe practicing a specific sound of the English language for a while. And then go back and review the vocabulary you learned before. Look up different sentences, different situations where the same vocabulary is used just in different contexts. So you discover more about that vocabulary. You build your confidence in using that vocabulary. And then move on to maybe learning a few expressions from a conversation that will help you perhaps express your opinion. Do your research, look at how those sentences are used in different situations. And then go back to reviewing those vocabulary items you learned and practice the sound you focused on before. In the long term, focusing on the process and building a learning plan that includes interleaving, you will pick up so much more simply because your brain is repeatedly reminded information. And if you want to learn more about how to plan your language learning in a way that favours the way your brain works, look out for part two after this video, which will talk about time management skills that will eventually help you feel less overwhelmed to learn to speak English because you will see how much more progress you make.